Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are going to discuss shift of water between compartments of body that is the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid. And we are going to discuss how the shift occurs and how it affects the volume of extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid in these six scenarios which are explained in the book BRS Physiology. So before starting, we should know two basic concepts which are the osmolarity and osmosis. So osmosis is the shift of water across a semi-permeable membrane and by the semi-permeable membrane we mean a membrane which has very small uh, holes in it through which solute molecules cannot pass but water can. That is why these solute particles are called osmotically active particles and osmolarity and this osmosis basically occurs due to the difference in osmolarity between two solutions. So osmolarity is defined as concentration of osmotically active particles in a solution. It is uh, expressed in osmol per liter. So for example, one molecule of sodium chloride has two atoms sodium and chloride which are bounded by ionic bond. So when dissolved in water the two atoms becomes ion, become ions sodium ion and chloride ion and become surrounded by water. So one molecule of sodium chloride gives us two particles a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Therefore, one molar solution of sodium chloride, which has Avogadro number of particles, has osmolarity of 2 osmol per liter because one molecule provides two, mol two uh, particles, two osmotically active particles. Similarly, the osmolarity of one molar solution of calcium chloride is 3 or small per liter because one molecule of calcium chloride gives us three par osmotically active particles one calcium ion and two chloride ions now we will discuss the three terms isosmotic hyperosmotic and hypoosmotic these three terms are basically relative terms and these are used when we are comparing the osmolarity of the two solutions. So, for example, we have these two solutions. The volume is equal. In between them, there is a semi-permeable membrane through which water can pass but solute cannot. These are the osmotically active particles of the solute. And uh, now we can see that if we count the number of particles and if we see the volume, the volume of both sides are equal and the number of particles on both sides are equal. So it means that the concentration of the solute on both sides, that is the osmolarity, is equal on both sides. Now these two solutions are therefore called isoosmotic solutions. Isoosmotic solutions because the osmolarity of these solutions is same and there is no net diffusion of water occurs between two isoosmotic solutions because the concentration on both sides or osmolarity is the same. Even if the volume of one solution is greater for example like this but the concentration is same that is the osmolarity is same even then we call these solutions isoosmotic because the osmolarity or the concentration of both solutions is same. Again, there will be no net diffusion of water between these two solutions. Now, let's see if there is a difference in osmolarity between two sides. Now, again the volume is same but this side is more concentrated, the osmolarity of this side is greater compared to this side. Now, this solution is called hyperosmolar compared to this solution. And this solution is called hypoosmolar compared to this solution. Now, 
nature does not like imbalance and nature wants balance so we can maintain balance by two ways either the solute should pass should some of the solute or molecules should go to this side so that they become equal or water should come from this side to this side so that the volume of it, uh, this solution increases so these particles uh, these osmotically active particles they cannot cross the semi permeable membrane because the holes in this membrane are too small for these particles so the first option is not an option for us now the only way is that to maintain balance water should pass from this compartment to this compartment and this is called osmosis so what will happen is that water will shift from the hypoosmolar compartment to the hyperosmolar compartment until the osmolarity of the two compartments become equal and the two compartments become isoosmotic and then when the, the two compartments are isoosmotic the shift of the water between two compartments stops so no shift occur between two isoosmotic compartments because the concentration on both sides is equal so now these water has shifted from this compartment to this compartment and now the concentration or osmolarity on both side has become equal so no now two solutions have become isosmotic and now no net shifting will occur so this is the basic concept on basis of which we will discuss what will happen to our extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid in all these six scenarios So now we are going to discuss our scenarios and for that we have two solutions the ECA extracellular fluid ECF and ICF that is the intracellular fluid and in between them there is a semi permeable membrane which is the cell membrane. So uh, although we know that the volume of intracellular fluid is two times the volume of extracellular fluid but here I have drawn the, or I have made the both volumes equal for the convenience of understanding so that we can see that which volume is increasing or decreasing and because we know that the volume does not matter what actually matters is the concentration or the osmolarity between the of the two solutions so normally the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid they are isoosmotic that is the osmolarity of the two solutions is equal that is approximately 290 or small per liter so now we will come to our first scenario that is infusion of isotonic sodium chloride that is the normal saline that, that which we which we give in our hospitals that is 0.9 percent sodium chloride solution so isoosmotic fluid will be added in this extracellular fluid like this and now we will see what will be the result so what has happened is that the volume of extracellular fluid has increased but the osmolarity has not changed because the fluid added is isoosmotic to the extracellular fluid there will be no net shift between the, of the water between ecf or icf and as the volume of extracellular fluid has increased, it will lead to increase in blood pressure as increased volume in the arteries will lead to increased pressure on its walls. And now uh, regarding the hematocrit and the um, uh, uh, plasma protein concentration, the hematocrit will decrease because hematocrit is basically the packed cell volume that is the volume of the RBCs compared to the volume of the whole blood so if this volume of the rbcs is x and the volume of the whole blood is y then hematocrit is equal to x divided by y and as the volume has increased but the rbcs are the same so it will lead to increase in total volume leading to a decrease in hematocrit as y has increased so hematocrit will decrease that is the rbc's have become a bit of a bit diluted in this extracellular fluid so now coming to our next scenario that is diarrhea 
loss of isotonic fluid so in diarrhea isotonic fluid is lost so uh, all the fluids which are entering or uh, all the fluids which are lost from the body they are, uh, everything occurs from the extracellular fluid and the effect of the change in extracellular fluid leads to change in icf so some of the fluid will be lost from extracellular fluid so some isosmotic fluid has been lost from ecf as the fluid loss is isosmotic there will be no change in osmolarity of the extracellular fluid thus there will be no net shift of fluid between ecf and icf now we see that due to loss of the isotonic fluid the volume of extracellular fluid has decreased as the volume has decreased it will lead to decreased in decrease in blood pressure now we see that uh, regarding the hematocrit as the volume has decreased the uh, hematocrit will increase because y has decreased and x is constant because there is no change in the volume of intracellular fluid which uh, uh, which is also the fluid inside the rbcs and the rbcs which are in this volume are now concentrated in this small volume so therefore they are more concentrated and hematocrit has increased so hematocrit increases so as the uh, plasma protein concentration